Welcome back to my channel, everyone. So I have this beautiful 90s inspired look that I'm gonna show you how to recreate. I don't know, I've just been feeling really nostalgic lately and I wanted to bring back this era because I think uh, just women and people in the 90s, they had such a unique look. This was before like filters and social media and everyone just owned their look. And I wanted to bring a little bit of that magic back today. So I'm gonna walk you through how I created this look. All right, you beautiful people. So I'm gonna begin with my skin prep. So I find that as I'm getting older, it's imperative for me to invest more into my skin prep before I do a full face of makeup. Just because makeup doesn't apply as nicely as it did when I was in my 20s. Just like any painting, you wanna make sure your canvas is clean and flawless, so. Oh, it feels so good. I love this cleansing water. I know a lot of people have their favorites, but this Mixoon one is really growing on me because you can feel that it's very gentle and it does the job really well. Wow, like I literally did my skincare this morning and there's still, there's still dirt and everything. So I kind of want to walk you through the late 90s, early 2000 makeup looks. A lot of the looks were very neutral, it was very matte. I feel like as I'm growing older, it's like this is a look that will work more with me. Because I'm going to be recreating this 90s makeup look, the finish, everything is really matte. So my recommendation if you want to play in this very matte and powdered look is you want your skin prep to have a glassier finish. And so I am going to recreate that famous Korean glass skin look, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And I actually found a brand that has perfected this routine where you can recreate this beautiful finish. And so the brand is called Mixoon. It's actually a relatively new brand. I didn't hear about this brand until last year. Uh, a few of my friends who are really big into K-beauty, they've been telling me that a lot of the K-pop stars, they're actively using the products and mentioning them in like the Vogue Get Ready With Me videos, and they were not even endorsed or sponsored. And so that's when you know it's legit. At first when I learned about the brand, I wasn't really a fan just because everything about the brand is about natural, pure ingredients. In the past, a lot of skincare brands that were just 100% natural, I just found that it just doesn't work as well. It's not as efficacious. Oftentimes the product doesn't last as long because there's mold growing on it. They don't use any type of preservatives at all. I think Mixoon changed my mind on this just because one, I met the founder and I got to know more about how much passion he puts into the brand. And he even owns a farm that grows like the centella leaves, for example. It's like in restaurants, they have like the farm to table concept. There's this like farm to skincare concept that I thought was interesting. And so I respect people who are very passionate about their brand. And if you want to achieve that Korean glass skin look, exfoliation is going to be key. But this is not like the 90s where you only had St. Ives, you only had these crazy apricot scrubs that are creating microscopic tears on your face. We are way past that. This is the future, and the future is about gentle exfoliation. And so I'm a huge fan of chemical exfoliation. I do use AHAs, BHAs. I use lactic acids that are like 40%. Like I'm using professional grade stuff. So when I was introduced to the Mixoon Bean Essence, I don't know, I was a bit skeptical just because I find that gentle exfoliation doesn't really work on me. I need things that are stronger, but I was so blown away by the Bean Essence and I can understand why it became viral on TikTok. You can kind of see here, it has a texture very similar to snail mucin. And I don't know if y'all have been following the Korean skincare trends for years like myself. Uh, snail mucin was a huge hit a long time ago. I mean, people were obsessed. When I say people, people in Korea were obsessed with snail mucin. And the idea is that a snail, they have this uh, layer over them that protects their skin. It's literally like a barrier. There's a lot of skincare benefits within the snail mucin. And so a lot of these brands that they say that they are using ethical methods to extract these snail mucin, and that's why it's okay, it's fine to use it, but when you actually learn about what's really happening behind the scenes, these poor snails, they are placed in environments where they're under tremendous stress, whether it's light, whether it's like some sort of stimulating machine that stimulates them to create more mucin. I was so disturbed when I found that a lot of them, they don't make it. 
I think this is why I was not really a fan of snail mucin for a while because I kind of felt like there's no way they're ethically sourcing literally the thing that's keeping the snail alive without harming them. And so I was never really the biggest fan of snail mucin. I've used other products, but I, I have to admit the bean essence changed my mind. You can see here that it recreates the snail mucin texture without harming any snails. So I was wondering like, why is it called bean essence? And I actually found out that it's formulated with fermented beans, pomegranate, barley, I believe, pear, and like other AHAs. And this is why it's such a great exfoliator. So before I came to the office, I actually did my exfoliation at home and I used the bean essence. And so I recommend using this first before you even clean your face. I don't use any cleanser. I, I go straight to the bean essence first and I apply it on my dry skin like this. I'll massage it in a circular motion. As I'm continuing to massage, there's tiny dead skin that's rolling off my skin and it's so sad, it's so gross, but it's so satisfying. And so this creates a really beautiful clean canvas. You can rinse it off with the cleansing water or water and you'll see here that my face is flawlessly exfoliated. And so I was so impressed with the bean essence. I'm a huge fan of harsh chemical exfoliations, but I mean, I will say that this product changed my mind. It showed me that you can still have a very gentle formula that anyone can use and it does the job very well. And so when I have days where I can't really use harsh exfoliations, like my lactic acids and my glycolic acids, um, the bean essence will take its place. How to achieve the glass skin look, it's all gonna be about applying thin, thin layers of essences. Sometimes I forget the order I'm supposed to be using them in, so I kind of just go with it. So I'm using first one of the essences and I apply it with my hands like this. You don't really need to use a cotton pad or anything just because it's kind of a waste. It's soaking up a lot of it. So you want to kind of apply it on your bare hands like so and just press it into your skin like this. Ooh, it's already feeling so great. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the other one. Again, it's like splashing this water on my face, but it's not water. It feels like, um, it feels like a mixture of like a fatty water. I don't know if that makes sense. But you know how like water can sometimes feel like fat? It has that fatty water texture. Very satisfying. And the last one I'm using is this one. Oh, I'm using this one's the last one. I'm like splashing it all over my mic. Holy crap. I'm just pressing it into my skin like this. Mmm, I feel so good. Oh my gosh. So I just applied all the essences. Normally, I would just go straight into my makeup after this, but because I am doing a shoot and I want my skin to be perfect, I'm going to apply this sheet mask. And this is not a normal sheet mask. This is actually their soybean milk pad. And what's so genius about it is that most sheet masks, it covers your whole face. And I feel like once you have it on, you can't really do much. You can't talk, you can't eat, and you kind of look scary. This is the method that I've been using since I was in my 20s, where before sheet mask really blew up and was more accessible to people, I actually made my own sheet mask by taking square cotton pads like this, very thin ones, soaking it with essence, and then peeling it into thin layers, and then applying it on my face like so. I don't know if I did a video, but I definitely have a photo of me using this method. And so when I found out that they have these soybean milk pads, and it's already in this form, I was so happy. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, someone did this. and. I don't have to look like a crazy ghost. I can just put this baby on and just go about my day. It says on the back that you just need to put it on for 10 minutes, but I find that this stays wet for like 20 minutes minimum, maybe longer. Put this on and I'm gonna make some tea. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for this to dry down a bit. Meantime, I'm just gonna hang out and make some tea, but have my friends at the office. <gasps> Hello. Look at, you look so cool. I want to do the same yeah, thing. Please. It's really amazing. Soybean wearing soybean. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's soy. Oh. It's soybean. Wait, how do you stick it? Like here, here. Do you see it on my face, right? Yeah, it looks so good. My face looks so dry right now. I needed it. I was like, Yo, put perfect. this shit on. I'm telling you, it's game changer. 
Oh, it feels so nice. Ooh, it smells good too. Very really? Clean. I don't smell anything. It smells like... <laughs> it smells like Whoa, meat. you're really sniffing that. Ooh. Oh my god, my head is so big and it fits perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get dry around my cheeks. Me too, I have a little rosacea, so... No, this thing is literally a miracle. It's gonna calm I'm it down? Obsessed. Yeah, you'll see it. Look at that. You look great. I can walk around like this easily. It's a million dollar shot right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're, we can eat with this too because I ordered food. I'm starving. Hi, James. What are you working on? Oh, well, you're working on your shirt. pasta. <laughs> That's true. This is soy and I modeling for the skull. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. The background. Hot. The background. The front is real. Damn, man. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and make my tea. All right, y'all. I am back in business so i mean it's been 10 minutes and you, you could still see how wet this is and i just want to move on with my makeup look but it's very generous it stays wet for a very long time so you can go in and just slather it on your neck your hands wherever you want that extra moisture but wow my face feels really really hydrated i find that most sheet masks there's this weird sticky after texture, I don't know if that makes sense. But you could see here, you don't have any of that. It's so, so smooth. Ugh, I love Mixoon. I know I've been talking about the bean essence a lot, but I kind of want to finish my whole point on why this is such a weird, unique, interesting product is, yes, it's an exfoliator, but it's also an essence. So if you apply this on as an exfoliator before everything else, it will remove your dead skin. But once you apply all the layers of the essence, you can use it like a traditional essence or kind of like a hydrating serum. That's the best way for me to describe it. So I'm actually gonna use this because it does help create that glass skin look. So I will layer it on top of all the other layers and you can see here it's starting to, the glassiness is coming through. Look at that. Man, there's no filter in this video. This is what my skin looks like. like I'm not shy to show skin texture. Cause you know, that's real. Like we all have pores, it's okay. No one looks like what they look like on Facetune, right? Um, unless you're like a newborn baby. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with the bean cream. Basically my whole skin care is Mixoon today. One of the team members at Mixoon, she told me this is actually her favorite cream. It looks like a thick cream, but once you apply it on, it just melts. It melts like butter. So like most creams can be very heavy, but this is a very light cream that actually hydrates the skin. So highly recommend if any of y'all are looking for a new skincare brand that can help you achieve that glass skin look, check out Mixin. You will not be disappointed because I'm in love I'm just so in love with, with this. Wow. Okay, so you can see my skin is just glowing, it's radiant, and it is ready, finally, for the base makeup. I will be using a combination of Chanel's uh, face tint. It's like a skin tint. Mixing it with Daydream Cushion, M's Daydream Cushion in Gentle Light. This has been my go-to base makeup for the past, like, what, three years? I want a little bit of more coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this baby up, create like very thin layers, cause you, you see how this entire time I've been applying thin, thin, thin layers, and this helps prevent that cakiness. Just gonna go in and just buff it out. Lately I've been reminiscing a lot about the 90s just because I feel like the whole world's gone crazy. Late 90s, early 2000s, it just, it just feels like my safety blanket. In fact, there's this channel, which I'm gonna link right here, I'll show you. This person, I think they were able to record all the old early morning cartoon shows all from the 90s late 90s early 2000s i would say the past few months because like i said the world the world feels like it's going crazy right now this has become like my self-soothing routine is just putting that on in the background it creates a safe space for me when i'm at home and i have it in the background the 90s was also when my mom was very young and uh, i wanted to kind of like kind of play in that space. I remember those days. Okay, so I don't even know if I need concealer. 
Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit, just more for um, highlighting, because I want this area to be brighter. There we go. Okay, Soy is giving an update on the milk pads. Look at that. You look good. Are y'all doing a mental health walk? Yeah, we're gonna do a Okay. I will be here just doing my makeup. So, okay. Base makeup looks good. Pretty happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and now powder my face. So, oh my gosh, y'all, we are back in stock with portrait mode. We were out of stock the moment we launched this and back in stock again. This is a powder that gives you the loose powder finish, but in a compact form. Look at that, oh my gosh. Okay, so now, I'm going to go ahead and before I actually go into my eye makeup, I'm actually gonna build the base and kind of bring dimension back to my face because you can see right now it's very flat. Unlike contouring where you're using more neutral tones, blush contouring, you're using a blush. And so I'm using here M's So Soft Blush in Demir. And Demir is like a muted pink. And I'm kind of just gonna build this in. And yes, this looks scary right now because it's pink. The problem with just only contouring with neutral shades is, for me at least, it just makes me look really gray. And this is why it's so important to kind of bring in an element of pink back to your skin. Because you know, we're made out of like blood and stuff like that, so it makes sense. And Demir is great, look at that. The thing that's great about So Soft is that it doesn't disturb the makeup underneath it because it's so soft to blend. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, so this is where I can go in with contour. I'm gonna contour, you see this, this little, call it my little turkey neck. It's going away. Bye, it's gone. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna like slim my face just a little more. I mean, it practically blends itself. Look at that, wonderful. Just a touch of contouring. Uh, this is with Corselette Sculpting Bronzing Powder in Slip. And I'm using very little. But the 90s, it was all about that neutral bronzer. Everyone was bronzed out. I love that look. Just taking Tara again. Just focus on here first to kind of like work and bring dimension. This is a technique I learned from Sang. He's like my favorite makeup artist. Kind of just soften the inner corner of the brows. It's all about that really soft airbrushed brow look. So it's kind of nice to see him. Um, the trend is now softer with brows. In this case though, this is going to be interesting because I am doing a very intense eyeshadow look, but I'm still able to keep it soft. And you'll see what I mean once I'm done. So this is a warm neutral palette and this is a cooler neutral palette. So the first color I will be using will be a combination of both Saturn and Timeless. So Timeless will go here I wanna bring the brown up here. This is the Saturn shade. I'm using this to kind of sculpt the outer V of my eyes. So I'm gonna take Saturn again and just apply it to my lower lashes. So I'm gonna take the shade Sculpt, which is a deep brown, very, very deep brown, and I'm bringing it to the lower lashes and I'm gonna sculpt a smokier angle out and up like that. And this is going to help lift my eyes. Just going to give me that like really beautiful cat eye shape. I'm going to do the same here. Okay, so with eyeliner, okay, this is going to be dark brown first. I'm working this and I'm just lining the outer V of my eyes. I'm going to use this shade Kronos and I'm going to keep the color right here. And with this black, I'm going to go ahead and tight line and I'm also going to tight line my lower lashes so I evened out my eyes and I'm going to go ahead and do my mascara and lashes and these they fan out so I'm going to go ahead and use this nice lashes are done basically my eye makeup is pretty much done um, I'm not entirely finished just yet just because I want to contour I know this sounds crazy but I want to create dark circles. So this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna take Demir again and with an eyeshadow brush, just very, very carefully tap 
this and just apply it right here. Again, just applying it right here. And this is going to kind of bring dimension back to my eyes so it doesn't look so flat. And it'll look really beautiful in the photograph because it just creates this like really beautiful sultry look. I find it's incredibly flattering. And I'm just gonna bring it to my nose too. Yes, I'm using blush on my nose, but it's gonna look nice. I'm taking a little bit of the bronzer shade, just accentuating my dark circles. You know, we want that vampire look. That's what we're going for. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna finish off with Whisper. Whisper and Tender. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off with my hair and I'll be right back. Hair is done, makeup is done, everything is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures. I hope you enjoyed this getting ready with me. Thank you so much for listening along and I'll see you on the next video. Good luck.